Yesterday, the Lakers lost in an absolute heartbreaker. Uh, you had Kleber, who hit a game-winning three, and you just knew it was coming, right? When Anthony Davis missed that set, uh, that pair of free throws, um, you know, or split it, it just heartbreak city. You knew it was coming. And it kind of paint the picture of what happened, even though I'm sure none of us really want to relive it. Um, the Lakers had a four-point lead and the ball uh, with 38 seconds to go. Uh, after D'Angelo Russell got a steal from Christian Wood, uh, the Mavs didn't foul. They let the clock run down, uh, which was surprising in and of itself, which turned out to be a good decision, probably because the Lakers missed a you know dozen free throws. Um, but D'Angelo Russell ends up missing a three with 17 seconds left. Uh, then Anthony Davis decides it would be a good idea to foul Kleber, who responds with knocking down all three free throws with seven seconds left. And then Anthony Davis goes to the free throw line and misses a free throw. And of course, Kleber knocks down a three and beats us. Did a great job trapping and closing in on Kyrie. Uh, and that left a guy open. I mean, even the commentators basically painted the picture for you uh, leading into that. And we ended up losing the game, which is an absolute devastator for multiple reasons. One, it always sucks when you lose on a game winner. Two, the Lakers need every game that they can get. Uh, and three, the Lakers are now sitting in the 10th seed, uh, a full game back of the 8th seed, two games back of the 7th and 6th seed, uh, which is not where the Lakers want to be. They're now three games under 500 instead of the other day having an opportunity to get to 500. And... It's just, and we would have been tied for seventh and a game out of sixth. And it just sucks because we went from being right there once again to not being there at all and now have another uphill battle to climb. So this is, uh, it's just heartbreak city for us Laker fans uh, in general. Now, as far as like this game, I mean, it boiled down to free throws is really what it boiled down to look a game isn't lost on just one player right and Anthony Davis could he have had a better monster game maybe um I mean he gave us 26 points 10 rebounds three assists uh shot nine of 14 from the field had a block uh and you know it, it just it happens right he 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 did decent right he didn't have a 40 point game but he still gave you 26 and 10 which is a good stat line right uh, you had D'Lo, who just, he had a terrible night, uh, 5 of 7 from the field, 0 of 6 from 3, couldn't buy a bucket. He did do some nice things, had some nice assists, some nice plays. Obviously, that steal uh, that I mentioned earlier down the stretch. Uh, Beasley, again, 0 of 3 from 3, which, by the way, D'Angelo Russell was 0 of 6 uh, from 3. Just, just a bad game all around. Um, Austin Reeves, he did his part, super efficient as always, 16 points, 5 rebounds, 2 assists. Uh, five of eight from the field, but this just again it boiled down for from free throws. Um, oh, one last point of note is winning Gabriel. Winning Gabriel, if we would have won this game, winning Gabriel deserved the MVP. He was fantastic. But again, shot five of twenty from three. That's not going to get it done. And you missed twelve free throws. We sh we got thirty one free throws and missed uh, missed twelve of them. We were nineteen of thirty one. The, to put that in perspective, Dallas got 19 free throws total <laughs> and shot 15 of 19 from the field. Um, it just, that's what it boiled down to. I mean, we basically dominated them in every way outside of free throws. You make your free throws, you win the game. That didn't happen, right? We couldn't stop Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving absolutely butchered us. 38 points, 6 rebounds, 6 assists. But outside of Kyrie Irving, no one else really did anything. You know, I mean, literally... Their, their two highest scorers next to Kyrie Irving were Christian Wood and Tim Hardaway Jr., who both had 12 points. Christian Wood was 5 of 15, and Tim Hardaway was 4 of 12. Like, so it's not like it's not like these guys had like this crazy over-the-top game. No, this was a game that we absolutely should have won. And that that made three did two things. One, it basically summed up our entire season <laughs> like that's just basically how our season's been all season long and two in my opinion I think this knocked us out of the potential for a six seed I think we had a real shot at a six seed 
I think we had a real opportunity to, to seize this game, win this game, and then we would have been a game out of the sixth seed in which the Warriors, who have a ridiculous stretch coming up with home or with road games, and they can't win a road game to save their lives, I just I think we would have surpassed them. Now, realistically, we're probably playing for the seventh A spot. Now, is the sixth spot completely out of the question? No. It's still possible. We're only two games out of six. But now Dallas has tiebreakers ahead of us. The Minnesota Timberwolves have tiebreakers ahead of us. Um, we do have the tiebreaker over the Warriors, so that's good. Uh, but, I mean, at the rate it's going, we might be playing the Warriors in the play-in. Like, that might end up being our matchup. Um, but Timberwolves, now, first off, I I hate when guys get hurt. It's really unfortunate. It really does. Um, you know, hopefully, Ant-Man... Uh, Anthony Edwards, hopefully he can get back uh, sooner rather than later. I hope it's nothing really major. Um, I believe that he's getting reevaluated today. Uh, and I do. I, ho I genuinely hope he comes back. Timberwolves, they were supposed to get Carl Anthony Towns. We have a game against them soon. And I want to beat them full strength. We probably get LeBron by that point. Like, I genuinely do. I want to play them at full strength. But that being said, it helps the Lakers, right? It does. Now, the Timberwolves, they have, you know, a stretch of games, and they're going to have to win without him and without Carl Anthony Towns for, for the foreseeable future. They end up playing the Toronto Raptors, so off of a back-to-back. -back. I mean, Tim, the Timberwolves could easily fall uh, and, and continue to fall in the standings. And then on top of that, again, the Warriors, they have something like five road games left. Something like, like They could lose all of those. And they're going to be a disaster, and then they could fall. The Thunder, if we beat the Thunder, then good. We should uh, have enough to get ahead of them. And, you know, all we'd be kind of, you know, sticking around for are the Dallas Mavericks. It's just guys have to step up, man. Malik Beasley, I understand that, you know, Darvin Ham wants to have some consistency in the starting lineup, which I understand. I get it. And Reeves is probably the best off the bench in that gap spot, right, where where he's kind of the, the bridge between the starters and the bench guys and then also, you know, runs with the starters and closes game when, when we need him to. But it's just Beasley just hasn't had it, you know, and I've tried to remain optimistic about Beasley. He is a streaky shooter, and at any point, he could turn it around. He really can. I still believe once LeBron James gets back, he's going to play that much better because it's LeBron James, and shooters around LeBron James usually thrive. Uh, and I don't think it's a coincidence that Beasley's best stretch with the Lakers was when we had D'Angelo Russell and LeBron James. But for now, it's like, it's just, it's hard to play him at times. Um, you know, Darvin Ham does do the right thing. I know some people feel otherwise, but he allows Beasley to try to get an opportunity to, to get hot and catch fire. You can't just... You know, he misses two, three straight shots, and you pull him, and that's it, and he doesn't play the rest of the game. You know, you need to let a guy who's a streaky shooter, they usually need to see one drop. Once they see one drop, usually they'll knock down several of those, right? We've seen it. We saw it in the Pelicans game, right? Hit one, and then another one, and then boom, 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 boom. Next thing you know, he has six threes, seven threes, uh, whatever he had. So he's a guy that you need to allow to get hot. But D'Angelo Russell's got to step up, right? He's had a rough past two games. Um, you know, the the uh, Pelicans game where we had the blowout, he was solid in. And the um, and the Knicks game, he was very good in, right? The Knicks game, he was, I mean, he was really the only one that showed up in that Knicks game. I mean, he had 33 points and nine assists in that game. But we need him and we need everybody. It's not just him. Again, we didn't lose this game on one player or one play or one moment or anything like that. You just don't lose games that way, right? It's sequences such as, you know, fouling a three-point shooter, missing several free throws, not just Anthony Davis, but everybody, right? I mean, every single person that shot a free throw all missed at least one free throw. That is a crazy stat, you know? But D'Lo has shown that he's capable of, you know, putting up numbers and providing nice stats. Like I said, in the next game, he gave you 33, 5, and 8. Um, you know, he, in, in the, in the, uh, Pelicans game, you know, he was again, standout, had a very nice game and gave you uh 17, uh, five and five, right? 
So again, you you have a guy who's shown that like he can go and give you production, that he can go and and be a guy, right? But he needs to pick it up, right? He's given us, you know, 17, 18 points a game, which is fine, but it's efficiency, right? It's it's stepping up and doing that effectively and efficiently. Um, you know, we need other guys other than Austin Reeves every night to just be the be other guys. Like D'Lo, he wants money. He's due for a contract. He needs to play as if, you know, he needs to show like I can be that guy. Like right now, he is, I still believe he is a great third option, right? Because he's not supposed to be the first. He's not supposed to be the second option. He's supposed to be the third guy on this Lakers roster. And I think in that role, he has a great uh, opportunity to really thrive in that third man role. Takes a lot of pressure off of him, stuff like that. But if you want to get paid, you want to be the guy, you know, and and prove that like you can be the second or first guy on certain nights, you have to play as such, right? And he just hasn't the last few games, um, at least efficiently. Again, had 17, had 18, um, and just, but again, wasn't efficient. And that's the key, is efficiency is everything. Um, and then again, in this game, you know, he gave us 11 and 11, which is usually a decent stat line, right? Okay, gave me 11 points, gave me 11 assists, that's solid. But he also, you look at his, you know, his shooting percentage, he's 5 of 17 from the field and 0 of 6 from 3. It's like, okay, well, then, <laughs> you know, that's not going to get it done. But we can't just solely rely on AD. I mean, AD gave you 26 and 10 on good efficiency, right? LeBron is still probably out for two weeks. LeBron's not coming through the door tomorrow to save us, right? And, I mean, unless we get the ship right again against, like, the Orlando Magic and stuff like that, like, what's the point of him coming back at all, right? I mean, if we're 10th, 11th in the in the West, like, what, why bring LeBron back at all? You might as well just let him regroup, recuperate, um, you know, make whatever tweaks you need to make in the off season, and just let him kind of rest it out and and go into next season. You know, we're we're tied right now uh, with the Jazz for eleventh, um, and we're only now half a game over the Pelicans. You know, um, so <laughs> we could easily fall out. Now, personally, I don't. I think we'll at least be the ninth or tenth seed, bare minimum. I really do. I don't think we're gonna be. I don't think we're gonna miss the playoffs entirely. I really don't. Um, I think we at least get into the play-in. But there's a big difference between that 7th, 8th spot and that ninth, 10th spot. Huge difference. Because all it takes is the Lakers one game to just shoot terribly or another team, you know, just shoot the lights out. You know, we play the Thunder and the Thunder just go crazy and just, you know, knock down everything that they throw up. And now you're sitting on the couch watching the playoffs from home. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Still plenty of time. The season's not over. I got a lot of people that the season's over, but season's not over. You got 11 games, and we're still only two games out of sixth, right? We're still only three games out of fifth. Um, I don't think we're going to catch the Clippers or the Suns, but we are only two games out of six. Anything can happen. We still have an easier schedule the rest of the way. Uh, you look at the 11 games that we have coming up, you can make an argument the Lakers should win all 11 games. But realistically, I don't think they will. They did, however, just come off of an 8-2 and two stretch over the last 10, not counting the last, like, three games. But they had a, their 10 games previous to this, like, you know, stretch, uh, this, this, like, little three-game uh, uh, lineup that we had. They were 8-2. and two. Can they go nine and two? Because if they go nine and two, then that puts them over five hundred. And there you go. You you might that might be enough to be the sixth seed. If not, I think it's at least the seventh or eighth seed. And if they can go, you know, ten and one, then that might get you a shot at the sixth seed. But regardless, getting to that seventh or eighth seed, I think that that's what the Lakers really need to shoot for. Um, I think if they get to five hundred, they'll probably be at least that eighth seed. Uh, so get the at least get the 500 on the season. That'll get you into the A seed, I think, just based on how tight the West is. And let's go get this win and then get into the playoffs. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question on to you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think about the Lakers? What did you think about this loss? Uh, do you hate it? Love it? How do you feel? Let me know down in the comments below.